Hey, welcome back. My name's Bill. This is Power Solutions Forestry. And uh, if you just watched the glove video, you'll notice I have an old pair of gloves on now because I'm not handling chainsaw bands anymore. So these are more than sufficient to not get cut to shit. And I got the locust log up on the mill. We need to mill it into two inch slabs. I've got two of them to do. That's the whole day today. Uh, and then get these stacked away to bring them to him sometime between tomorrow is 4th of July. So sometime over the weekend, or I might just take Monday and do all my deliveries on Monday because I have another delivery as well. So we're going to get to milling this locust. Um, I am running a brand new Silver Tip Turbo 7. Oh, I didn't put my covers on. Let me uh, pause you guys one second while I throw my covers on. I want to keep this down to a minimum, maybe get both in. All right, magic. Got the covers on. So this is the log right here. This is for a woodworker, Josco, and Josco will watch this, so he'll get to see what happens to his wood. Um, this log is in the good wood, about 16 across, and uh, there's kind of an inclusion on the bottom, but let's just say, I don't know, 12-ish high. It's bowed like this so i have the horns facing up right now my top cut is i'm going to make it at 12 and i'm 18 up on the ends here uh, i leveled the ends instead of the pith because the pith is way off center this end down here is uh, 12 by 15 so overall it's a pretty yeah, it's a fairly symmetrical log um, obviously dry black locust it is filthy there is absolutely nothing I can do about that. Um, these two logs are going to wipe an entire band. I will show you in the furrows when these things sit around and have crap blown in them for years and years and years. You can see in the furrows of black locust what the dirt looks like. This one is no different. The furrows are loaded with crap. And I don't know how good the view is going to be, if you can see into that dark area in there. But, I mean, I just see nothing but dirt. So, anyway, this, I have a brand spanking new Silver Tip Turbo 7 on. And these two logs are going to wipe this band. I hope that I can get through the two logs. It's not many cuts. We're only talking about... <sighs> You know, once I get to clean wood, one, two, three, four cuts, five cuts total per log. Um, might have to, once I get to clean wood is the key there because there's going to be a few more cuts in the beginning. I will be taking the slabs off and throwing them up on my sawhorses. I am on microphones, so they are going to mess with the sound of the sawmill. But you will get to see the sawdust shooting out the side and understand how it's cutting. So, with no further ado or adieu, adieu, I think I'm going to come down and cut this at 12. And hopefully that cleans it up. If it doesn't, I'll have to take a one-inch board off it. And then we'll flip it over and we'll slab it out. And then we'll throw that one up and we'll do the same thing with it. So, that's the game plan today. For me and Danny, and then we'll get cleaned up and hopefully have a good 4th of July. I hope you guys have a good 4th of July as well. So I'm going to come down to 12, just because that's how I got it measured. I'm going to stop out a little bit, my uh, adjustable guide out a little bit. We'll see what this looks like. Throw it in just a little bit. Man, that stinks. It's not a good wood. Not a lot of good wood in this. I'm going to come up to 14 and take a cut right there. I'm going to remeasure too. This has been, uh, it's got to be 12. This is the theme of Black Locust right now. I'm going to take it at 14 just to make sure I'm not seeing something that is tricking me here. 
but I think I'm going to have to come down to 12, and then we'll flip it over. And the other side is going to be mostly good wood. So let's go ahead and roll through it like this. That was a swing and a miss. Should have cut it at 12. However, the log is moving around a little bit, which was causing me a little bit of havoc. Now I'm going to have to try to get this dog maybe a little better and make sure that I'm up against my stops. Yeah, it's here. I can get dog a little better. Yeah, I'm tight here. Uh, we're going to go back and make a cut at 12. I have to go kind of slow. It's not happy. You know, for those of you that want to run 10 degree bands in this, it just ain't going to happen, boys and girls. This wood is so hard, I'm running right up against the flanges on my roller guides. Nice. Nice and cleaned up here. Beautiful wood. Um, if I had clearance, I might consider... This band's already suffering. This log's moving a little bit the way it is. So I think I'm just going to flip it over. It does not like the bow in it because it's only resting in the middle, really. So we'll get some cleaner wood if we mill from the other side. And it's got a nice wide flat spot right now. This is going to be a beautiful slab. It's 14 wide here. It's like 11 wide in the middle. Nice color. I'll scrape it off and show you guys what we're working with. This will be the final slab. So I will scale. Um, I will set myself on eight quarter scale off the bottom. So that this slab is my final piece, this beautiful piece, nice solid. I'm not going to pour water in it, but I'll show you the piece. So far, gorgeous wood. So I probably have, say, one, two, three, maybe four slabs in this. But it's absolutely beautiful wood. Great color. You don't see this dark color in black locust very often. That's kind of cool. Um, this side, so we got one, two, maybe three, but then it tapers real fast right there. So probably four good slabs in the other side too, maybe five. So right now I'm probably going to pause you guys and I'll actually use that on my uh, retaining wall over here.
There's Danny. I'm going to pause you guys, flip this thing over, and we'll uh, go to slabbing from the other side. Hopefully, we can make this band last long enough to cut two logs. So, for right now, magic. We're going to pause you. All right, so we got it flipped over. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to come down and take my top cut here at 8 and 3 eighths. It's going to... It's going to be close, but it's going to leave us the most wood. And then drop on scale. I'm going to actually set my eight quarter scale at eight and three eighths because I want my bottom slab to come out two inches. So I'm going to drop down to eight and three eighths. And that is four slabs, three cuts, three curves. Set my eight quarter scale there. And what that does is that makes my final cut at two inches. So we get two inch slabs. So we're going to take our top cut at eight and three eighths. And that's going to bust off. Uh, let me just look here. Yeah, there's nothing there. It's There's a big fissure down the middle. So that's not going to really have any good use for wood. Uh, we'll throw that off. And then we'll just drop on scale. I am going to have to adjust my dogs when I get a little lower. But uh, top cuts, eight and three eighths, and we'll see what happens. That did take a pretty big chunk of material out of the middle. Um, probably could have conservatively maybe gotten another, not another board for Josco, but another board out of that. Uh, the wood is gorgeous. Uh, we're going to go ahead and just drop down to our next eight quarter mark and take another slab until I get down to my stops. These are nice pieces, nice and solid. Dogs down. You do have to meter your speed on something like this. Um, not all black locust is created equal. Some black locust is harder, some black locust is softer. Sometimes it mills like a dream. This log right now is milling really hard. So we'll just come down to our next eight quarter mark. And we'll take another piece off. We'll go a little slower this time. Let it clear chip. So I can hear the band come up against the flanges in the roller guys. Trying to meter my chin so it stays off it.
wash it at the end, just let it bleed out. Okay, I'm going to come back up and then we're going to come back. We're going to make another pass at the next drop. So that was six and something. Coming to four. Four and eight. We'll make another pass. One more cut after this. Let me get a look at the other side, make sure I don't have any stop trouble there. Looks clear. I think I'm good. Nice, even pressure. You hear the band against the back of the roller, guys, and backing off just a little bit. Just let it cut. You guys will see if we run into that stop. I think we're going to do it. So, so far, so good. We are beating this band like it stole from us right now. If I see anything super interesting, I'll show you, but these are gorgeous. Nice, full, solid, unlike all the other black locusts I've cut lately, which has been nothing but rot spots in the middle. I would say that this band overall is not cutting uh, as smooth as you guys are normally used to seeing me cut. Back you guys up a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. We only got one more cut on this log. I am going to have to drop this stop down to make that cut. Yeah, these are beautiful, nice and solid and hard and straight. And there's a little bit of tension in them, a teeny little bit of bow up like this. Uh, th this band is definitely not cutting as smooth as I am used to. Overall, it's cutting nice and flat. Uh, I will show you what the slab looks like. Gorgeous figure. It's really a nice piece. So just looking at the grain. I don't know how good it's going to show up. Hopefully you can see it through the camera. It's beautiful grain down here. Gorgeous figure on that through there. Of course, I think Josco would just like to have nice straight grain like this. But overall, it's still cutting pretty good. Hopefully we get one, through one more log. So um, I'm going to pause you guys one second while I move shit around. And uh, we'll get right back at it. All right, so we're gonna make our final cut on this one. And then we'll put the other log up here and see if we can cut the other one.
This cut should be at two and an eighth. Ah, no, two inches, sorry. Perfect. For those of you that are always wondering how long a band lasts, and when we answer and we say, well, it depends on what you're cutting, this is a really good example. This band's pretty whooped already. Uh, you know, the, you know, we like to say, well, the, you know, they can last like 500 board feet. Well, this band is pretty whooped. Hasn't cut anywhere near, <coughs> you know, 150 board feet. Brand spanking new. Look at what I'm doing. These are beautiful planks. This is exactly what Josco was looking for. And, uh, Give you one look at this last plank here before I load, put you guys on pause and load the other one up. We're only at 23 minutes. Should be able to cut them both. One thing I am going to have to do after this order is go up on my black locust price because it's not cost effective to cut it at three bucks a board foot and try to get planks like this out of it. Uh, hopefully you can see how beautiful the grain is. I don't know how it's going to show up on camera, but really pretty slab. The one that's up there is really pretty too. Hi, Danny. Danny hanging right underneath him. This one came out really pretty too, but nice, big, thick, wide straight grain pieces for him there's a little bit of checking in this one hopefully that only runs to that little knot which i think it does i think that's all that's going to run to but he's going to get a bunch of good wood out of these i am going to pause you guys uh, probably put you on charge for a minute bring you back out when i go at the rest of this law. Actually, I don't need to charge you. I'm just going to put you on pause while I take that off and throw the other log up here and get ready to cut the other one. It's pretty much going to be a carbon copy, I think. And hopefully the band makes it all the way through. All right, pretty much a carbon copy. This one's got a few more inclusions in it. Um, I am going to make my top cut at 13. Let's just see if we can get this thing done. The, there is a flat spot on the bottom of it that twists, so here i've got the flat spot over here down there the flat spot is on the other side uh there's an inclusion through here that i don't know if 13 is going to clean up but we're going to find out and it's uh, it's going to be just like the last one it's rock hard very unlike black locust that i cut every day this is harder <laughs>
So, I'm tempted just to flip it over right now and slab it. It's not going to leave me a lot to hang on to. I'm going to come down one inch. So I'm at 13. I'm just going to take a scale inch and come down to 12. Take another piece off it. Actually, 11 and 7 eighths. Take a full inch off it. See if that gives me a better uh, registration surface. This will be another piece for the retainer wall. Uh, I really think I should come down one more inch. Not if I if I cut this off the other side. So that's eight and three eighths. It's perfect right now. It's giving them a lot of weight on the bottom. Right now, this log's pretty centered up. Huh. Not a lot of good answers here on this one. I think I might only get... three good slabs out of this one. So I think I either got to make my waist on the bottom and scale off the top. That's what I'm going to do. So... What I'm going to do, I'll show you what's going on. If you look at where this wing comes in right there, right now I have eight and a half from the bottom of that fissure to the flat. That would give me four pieces, but the bottom piece is going to suck. Um, there's no straight piece all the way through it. I would have to take another piece off here. Which means I need to get down to six and a quarter. But what I can do is flip this over right now, cut the top down till I get a flat, a nice even flat all the way across, set my scale there and cut down and leave my waist board on the bottom. So leave my bottom one hopefully being something like inch and a half or inch so that's what i'm going to do i'm going to pause you guys we're going to flip it over and we will scale off the top and run it like that all right so the methodology here is we're going to take the top cut at nine right now and we're going to sneak up on a flat spot uh, nine is what i've is just under this fissure in the middle in the middle right here and that's going to taper off of the ends. I don't have to really start paying attention until eight and three eighths. What I don't want to, um, I want to get on scale prior to seven and a quarter. Seven and a quarter is my drop dead spot so that I. I'm going to leave a one inch board on the bottom in that bad board. I'd like to leave a little more than that. So uh, let's say seven and three quarters. So if I cut nine, I could then cut it seven and seven eighths. 
um, and that would be a one inch after that. And then if that's a clean cut, then I'll drop on two inch scale and leave the waste on the bottom. So uh, I might just double check here. So I got two inches to the top. I got 12 is 10. think maybe just to leave myself a teeny bit of playroom I'll go to I'll start this cut at nine and an eighth that's what I'm gonna make this cut at give myself another eighth of an inch and nine and an eighth and then we'll see what happens Band is really getting woof, boys and girls. Not the center of this uh, slab cuts paper thin. All right, so I got a nice clean surface now. Um, I should be able to drop on two inches from here. So I'm actually going to set my two inch scale right where I am right now. For those of you who hung on this long, I'm going to give you a little bit of bonus material here to show you what I'm talking about. If you don't understand setting scale, I'll show you what I mean. So what I'm doing right now is I'm setting my eight, my eight quarter scale, which is the green scale over here, where I am at nine and an eighth. That means I'm scaled off the top. If I set this off the bottom, let's say I set it at two so that one of these lines would line up with two, that would be scaled off the bottom. Right now I'm scaled off the top because I have a nice, clean, thick, wide cut all the way down. So I'm going to drop on two inches. And when I get to the bottom, just to let you know where I'm going to be, I'm going to cut out right here at about... Uh, two and three quarters uh, and then I will see whether I go ahead and drop down two let's see two and three quarters it's right there you can drop down to inch and take inch off give myself a just over it's not going to be a very good board um we'll see what happens rather than just guessing here i'll go ahead and get you guys back over here so you can watch the sawdust stream fly out and like i said we're whooping this band right now where'd danny go Let's see if we can find Danny. He's not under here. Hopefully he's in the truck.
Hey, Dan. Oh, he's under the truck. See, he's down under there. All right. We'll find any way we can to prolong the video. So we're going to drop on two inches. We'll take a bunch more slabs. And I'll um, throw them up here on the saw horses. We'll mark them out for whatever board feeder in each one. So Josco will know. And then we'll see if he wants any of the other ones from the other day too. So let's go ahead and get her back. Make a few two-inch cuts. And we'll call it a day here. Get everything put away and wrapped up. Supposed to pour on Friday. Tomorrow's 4th of July. Still cut nice and flat. So that's my first two inch drop right there. My next cut's going to be uh, right at like four and three quarters. One, two, three. Drop right down to four and three quarters. Cut another one out. Or onto my two inch scale, wherever that ends up being. This happens to be four and seven eighths. Go up one, two, three, four, five. Come back. We'll drop down to our two inch cut, two and something. We'll make that, and then I think we'll flip the bottom slab over and cut it to two inches. So this cuts at two and three quarters right now. Wow, 
my uh, water feeding off the back of the van instead of my water thing hit the wood. I think we're all clear there. Yeah, we're definitely low enough on the other side. Let's go ahead and cut it out, I guess. Wonder how long it'll cut and dry. Get these off. Take myself a drink first. Pretty dusty. We'll get these off. I need my drink so I don't hit it. We'll get these off. If I see anything interesting, I'll show you. And I think we'll take that bottom one and we'll flip it over and we'll cut it at two inches. We'll take a skim cut off the top. See if we can save a slab out of it because it's got little bit of a way to go there yeah these are beautiful absolutely gorgeous slabs I'll show you this one maybe then still cutting fine uh, it's kind of unremarkable. Pretty, but unremarkable. Pretty straight grain. There's some cool grain down there. I'll show you the next one before I take it off. Try not to fall down. Actually, this one on top of that one. Let's see what this one looks like. Yeah, this one's way cooler. I'll show you this one. This one's pretty cool. Nice, beautiful grain. Really pretty wood, nice and solid. You see that cool grain figure there where that old knot is? See how smooth the cut? It's still, I mean, it's still cutting pretty good. I, I, I give that credit to the roller guys, not this um, band. I think this band's pretty whooped, to be honest with you. You can see some of the band marks in it. I can hear it in the cut, but yeah, it's pretty wood. So let me uh, get this slab off and I'm going to pause you guys one sec. We'll get this slab off. We're going to flip the other one over and see if we can skim it. Cool. So you can see what I got up here for planks. Really, really beautiful black locust. This is what going to work out perfect for them. This one here. Uh, is I think two and three quarters thick. 
Uh, yeah, just a, right around two and two and three quarters thick. I'm going to skim this to two inches and hopefully get rid of some of that inclusion right there and turn this into a decent slab. So that's the plan. And then everything on the ground here is going to go into my retaining wall that's going over here. Black locust retaining wall. Back you guys up just a hair. So I'm going to drop down to two inches on my scale and make a cut. And that's going to conclude our cutting for today. So we'll take, this is not retaining wall material, it's too thin, so we'll use this to cover up one of his good slabs over here, so it doesn't crack in the sunlight, and see what we ended up with here, think we ended up with a usable piece here, beautiful color, oh my god, beautiful color. We'll see what he feels about it. That's gorgeous. The color on it's awesome. Uh, it's not the widest piece. Give you a bird's eye view of it. So we got a real good section about maybe a little over eight inches wide all the way down, which is what I was looking for. The color on this is gorgeous. It's got some of those dark colors in it, which you don't see on black locust very much. So that's kind of cool. And then if I flip it over, go over the other side. See if I can do this one-handed. If we flip it over, he's out of the way. If I can do it one-handed. Yeah, it's a really nice piece on the other side too. Beautiful. Very, very cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale all these out, mark on them what they are, uh, get them into two piles. Oh, dusty. Get them into two piles. I'll stack the other ones onto those. Uh, and then I've got a spot to stack them that's in the woods up there on top of the hill. If you see the chicken coop to the left of that, so they'll be in the shade until I bring them to him. So, um, for now, I always appreciate the watch. If you got to watch the, uh, if you didn't watch a video about the work gloves, go ahead and watch it. I don't know if I can show you the cuts wherever there are holes in these. 
from bands, but that's why I had to get new gloves today. Um, let me show you the one on my thumb over here. So wherever I have a hole, I get cuts. Uh, but these gloves are old, and, uh, you know, they're still plenty usable for stuff like this, just not for handling bandsaw bands. Um, I hope you all have a great 4th of July. I uh, don't know what we're going to do yet. I might sharpen some bandsaw bands because I've got a whole bunch of bandsaw bands that just need to be base ground. So I think I might sharpen some bandsaw bands tomorrow. Um, over the weekend, I got to get these delivered. Monday, I got to deliver all the pine. And then um, next week, I'm going to be cutting two by fours. And the following week, I'm going to Ontario to Norwood for four days. So four or five days, I can't remember, 17th to the 21st, I guess. So um, I only have uh, one more next week is my only full week of real work around here. And we will be going back on the shed because um, this is right now my last important customer order to get out of here. And I think this is plenty of wood for Josco. He's going to be really happy with this stuff. Hopefully, you'll take some of my other stuff. Uh, we'll find out. But what I'm going to do is I'll bring it. I'm going to scale it all. I'll bring it all to him. And then he can decide what he wants me to bring back. And whatever I bring back, I'll turn into flower boxes and retain them all. So I uh, appreciate the watch. If you guys have any questions, hit me up. Uh, just so you know, that band is probably pretty damn close to roached. I'd love to pull it off and show you the glinting on it, but nobody's hanging on that long for that. So for now, for Danny and myself, happy 4th of July. It's Pirate Solutions out.